Hello again and welcome back for another edition of London Direct. We're going to talk Greece now. Is Alexis Tsipras playing Jose Mourinho-esque mind games or is he just being playing irresponsible? Well, I've been speaking to Ranko Beric from Monex about all things Greece and all things Eurozone. Right, uh, so there's still lots of shenanigans uh, surrounding Greece. Um, given that Tsipras has now been to Moscow, he's made these reparations claims, is he really acting like a leader who wants to stay in the Euro? Well, I think there's posturing on both sides of the negotiations, and I think if you look at who actually has the leverage, Greece probably has a little bit less leverage. Um, they haven't made clear any sort of statement, we will leave the Eurozone if we can't get a favourable deal, and so I think the visit to Russia, perhaps um, a cynical observer might say that there's an implicit sort of statement there, we're saying, well, you know, if we don't get what we want, um, or at least you know, some progress towards what we want in terms of fiscal space, then we do have another potential geopolitical ally which would be unfavourable to Germany. So it's negotiating on a number of fronts. So what do you think uh, Greece is going to do next? Because there's a new deadline, there's a new deadline every week, but I was reading that the Greek media is saying that they have to get their list of proposals ready in six days' time. Um, whatever happens, they just have to get these reforms in line, don't they? Right, so as I've said, sort of my opinion is that there is a basis for a good compromise um, between Greece and its creditors, and the compromise is Greece puts through some solid economic reforms that make their economy more of an attractive de investment destination, a better functioning labour market, so on and so forth, and in exchange, the fiscal restraints that have been placed on Greece, so for example the budget surplus, those restraints are relaxed, and I do hope and I believe that that's the compromise that's being worked on. So really the, the list of reforms that Greece is proposing now, I'm sure there's a lot of back-channeling in terms of are we doing enough, or well, no we don't want to do that, yes we do want to do that, and I think, I think the outline of a deal will emerge over the coming weeks. The yeah. only question is really, will Greece be able to pay its bills in the meantime? Yeah, so, so Greece has actually managed to raise some cash in the debt markets. Um, what's this a reflection of? Is it just that investors are so desperate for any sort of yield that they'll even buy Greek debt even if there's a possibility of default? Or is it a, is it a show of confidence in Greece and also the, Greece being able to find a solution to the Eurozone? I think it's both, quite simply. So firstly, investors are desperate for yield, um, especially with what's happening in sovereign um, sovereign bond yields across the Eurozone, you know, the, the ECB's um, QE program is basically working, it's doing exactly what it says on the tin. So yes, investors are looking for yield, but also at the same time, I think an impartial observer would look at the situation and say, well, the basis for a deal exists, both sides say that they want a deal, so if we take those two very basic facts at face value, uh, there probably is quite a strong case to say that a deal will be struck. And what's the situ situation with the Euro dollar? Um, we've seen some weak US data recently, we've seen some quite strong European data. It's a while ago parity seemed nailed on so where do you think we go over the next couple of months? Right well I think the latest data should be looked through a little bit so essentially we have had an incredibly harsh winter from the United States so the latest non-farms report right you, you know you look at it you say oh you know it was almost half of what most people were expecting sure that does look scary but then you look at the actual changes in sector employment it was your manufacturing your mining um, your construction essentially those were the sectors that took the hit in employment and guess what all that stuff happens outside and it's been freezing in the United States. So meanwhile, the more indoor focused sectors, um, services, uh, healthcare, so on and so forth, continue to create jobs. So there is quite a strong case to say that the recent downturn in US data has been driven largely by weather. And equally, the uptick in, U in uh, Euro data, particularly in terms of survey optimis optimism, is coming from quite a low starting point. So. I think to an extent, um, yes, the turnaround uh, in data has affected euro dollar. In the medium term, I still think the downwards trend on euro dollar is going to be intact, but we certainly could be looking at a period of sideways trading, especially when US um, Q1 GDP data begins to emerge. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's finish by looking forward. Uh, Mario Draghi's got, got his important press conference after the ECB meeting next week. Um, what are you expecting from that meeting? And he's going to face some really tough questions over Greece again, isn't he? Yes, yes. I mean, we all know Draghi is a master when it comes to the political aspects of his job. I know it may be controversial to say that, but it's not. You know, it's undeniable there are political aspects to some of the decisions that the ECB is making at the moment in terms of will it continue to extend financing um, to Greek uh, liquidity? I should say to. 
Greek banks um, and those types of questions. So I think Draghi, again, will use the press conference, as he always does, to accomplish his objectives. And I also think, uh, to be fair, the ECB is entitled to a little bit of a victory lap. Um, you know, the QE program is doing exactly what it says on the tin. Well, thanks to Ranko for his take on events. Stay tuned to Duke's Copy TV for more interviews and analysis. But from London, goodbye. Thank you.